The living intact nerve cell parasite complex can be conveniently viewed in the cremaster muscle of an infected mouse at several magnifications by preparing the entire infected animal for intravital microscopy. Nemutol was used as the anesthetic, and the mouse was killed at the end of the experiment by an overdose of the same drug. The diagram shows the relationship of the nerve cell parasite complex to the rest of the muscle tissue. This freeze frame shows an intact nerve cell parasite complex in the cremaster muscle of an infected mouse. Under low magnification, the circulatory reedy, the nurse cell, and the L1 larva in its intracellular niche are clearly visible. Something of the nature of the vessels that surround the nurse cell can be discerned by observing the flow of formed elements within them. First, since the flow is rapid within the reedy, and it is wider than capillaries in the surrounding tissue, we conclude that the reedy is not derived from capillaries. Second, the movement of formed elements is steady. In other words, no pulsation is seen in it, as might occur if the incoming vessel were an arteriole. Thus, the circulatory reedy emanates from a single venule spreading out over 80% of the surface of the capsule. Conventional histological analysis confirms this observation. This is a typical circulatory reedy from a mouse infected for six months. The cast was obtained by employing an anatomic plastic casting technique allowing for the visualization of all vessels. Again, note the width and the size of the reedy of the vessels, arrow B. Arrow C indicates the space once occupied by the nurse cell parasite complex. A typical muscle capillary is indicated by arrow A. The reedy most closely resembles sinusoidal vessels. In the mammalian host, these flattened, wide circulatory elements are associated with all endocrine glands and the liver. They are designed for a high throughput rate and are highly permeable. Given those characteristics, they easily facilitate the entry of hormones, serum proteins, and other essential proteins from these organs into the venous return. Since the circulatory reedy is more sinusoid-like than any other vessel type, it could function as a highly permeable network, allowing for the rapid inflow of nutrients and outflow of wastes. It has been established by numerous in vitro analyses that the metabolism of the L1 larva most closely resembles that of an anaerobe. In addition, biochemical evidence derived from several recent independent studies also strongly indicates that the nurse cell cytoplasm depends upon anaerobic pathways of energy utilization. Thus, our observations, based on intravital microscopy, that the vessel giving rise to the circulatory reedy is a venule carrying oxygen-depleted blood, is consistent with this molecular view of the nurse cell parasite complex. At higher magnification, one sees the spatial niche of Trichinella spiralis from the perspective of the parasite itself. Note the probing-like behavior of the anterior end of the worm, as indicated by the arrow. It is possible that this activity is associated with the parasite's penchant for secreting proteins that emanate from its stichosome and which become distributed throughout the cytoplasm of the nurse cell. By rocking slowly back and forth and by probing around within the cytoplasm of its host cell, the parasite may be ensuring an even distribution of the 40 or so secreted proteins within its essential niche. This is a photomicrograph of a developing nurse cell. The tissue section was treated with a rabbit antibody that identifies the sugar residues, tyvalose, characteristic of most of the secreted proteins of the L1 larva. The arrows indicate the enlarged host cell nuclei, the nucleoplasm of which contains tyvalosylated peptides. The nurse cell cytoplasm also contains significant amounts of parasite secreted peptides. NC equals nurse cell, NM equals normal muscle, L equals L1 infective larva.